From Playground Poker Club in Kahnawake, Quebec, this is Poker Night in America. What's up guys? Welcome to Poker Night Presents Party Poker Live at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal. I'm not Chris Hansen, nor am I Joe Stapleton. I am Doug Polk. Who let the Dougs out? UNC Wilmington did because I did not graduate. But look who's laughing now. I'm on your TV, Dad. This is a quick look at the stacks we've got coming into today. Three people buying in for 100,000. Three people buying in for 200,000. Some deep stack poker begins right now. Our blind structure will be the same as yesterday. $100, $200 blinds with a $300 ante on only the big blind. Right out of the gate here, Roberts looks down at pocket tents. Opening it up at 1,500. We also have Jeff Gross in the mix today. Good to see another YouTuber making it in there. He gets out of the way though, and Antonio has pocket fours and called the open. How do you think this, uh, this main event's gonna go, Jeff? I think they'll get the guarantee. 964, nice way to open the sesh here, Antonio. Like the phases, are they? Now Roberts checks on 964, and with an overpair, she's clearly going to be check calling. Yeah, I think you'll, I think it'll, it'll get there. But she's actually thinking about check raising. Now Antonio is very excited about the way this is going. But he wants to call and give Roberts a chance to lose more money on later streets. The deuce on the turn looks like a good card for Roberts, but in reality it's a terrible one. She wisely checks anyway, and now Antonio is going to bet with his set. 17,000 is a healthy sized bet, around two thirds of the pot, and back over to Roberts with pocket tens. And this is one of the problems with fast playing your over pairs, facing a bet in the flop. You build a pot that might be a bit larger than you're looking to play. However, you have the over pair, probably gonna end up putting a call here and play some rivers. Yeah. Um, I think it's also just people being, and Roberts being makes aware the call. of how it works. Because even me, who I love this kind of stuff, like I didn't really eye in on day two or how does it work, you know, it's just. The jack of diamonds on the river could be a saving grace for Roberts, as now if Antonio was bluffing with a hand that hit a jack, she's beat. Once again, Antonio has one of the best kinds of spots in poker. How much money should I bet and try and get paid? Something in the 40 to 45,000 range looks about right. But he's swinging for the fences. 100,000 to go for the rest of Roberts' buy-in. People feel about it. Now, what can Roberts beat? Maybe a hand like 8 7 suited, a missed straight draw. Maybe a hand like some backdoor clubs that also missed. But she also has to realize that there's a possibility that Antonio has three of a kind. Yeah, I'll pay you off. I call. Call. Set of fours. Oh, nice. Chips. Chips, please. And the straddle's back on. Yawn straddling to $400 under the gun. Isn't such a good opportunity there, isn't it? To put a guy to the test. Tom sees everything as like opportunity every hand. I just can't fold on Figures out a way. Ace King for Kripan opening up the 1500. Roberts probably on a little bit of tilt with a queen eight call here. You gotta use your reputation. It can be tough when you get stacked to try and play conservative and small pots, but you have to maintain that discipline. Or the floodgates will open. Great, I think I'm great. I'm going to win this pot. Jeff Gross yeah, getting into the moves. mix by four suited. Why not like bump it up? He's here to play. Let's see those cards in the yeah. muck. But what he doesn't realize, he's up against Big Slick. Professional best friend. Can't be TV debut now. He played. No, he, he's, he likes to mess yeah, with like like Dog like also with pocket moves. eight in the straddle going to make the call. In a previous episode, we saw Kirpan full days king do a three bet, but here. He's in there, and he's looking to play a flop. Looks like we got a little pot. Wow. Now, how spewy is Roberts feeling? Because this is not a call three bet mm. hand. I'm kind of priced in, but. Discipline. Nice to see. Reels it in. Not going to tilt it off. I like it. Three solid hands here. Sure Let's take a flop. One of them might like, uh, oh, I don't really like it. Well, I had enough callers there. That, and uh, this flop is Action City. Young flops top set. Jeff Gross has a double gutter as well as a back door. 84. Flush drop. 84. It's such a great spot to bet this hand in Jeff's situation because 
It looks like he has a hand like jacks, queens, or kings. It does not look like he's on a draw. Now, Yang decides just to flat call the flop with his pocket eights. I think raising or calling can both be good. Japan wisely gets out of the way. And we're heads up for the turn. Do you meet playing poker, you and Ralph? 10 years, yeah, yeah. I started playing in The turn deuce is a terrible card for Jeff. He's now dead against a full house, which guess what? Yang has. And this card might make him want to bluff. His opponent is less likely to have a set when there are two deuces yeah. out there. But Jeff it? wisely checks here on the turn. Made for casino players, yeah. I mean, this place is freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah it's it's great, it's kind it's of very really similar to this. Um, and for years, people nice. have been telling me, Sorrel was telling me, you've got to, you know, you've got to go and check out this place and a few other friends. You know, you have to go to Montreal. Well, very conservative play from Jeff. Yeah. Works out here. I wouldn't mind seeing a bet on the turn and get your opponent to fold hands like nines. People are so nice. I'll show him. That would have been a gross river for Jeff had he made the call and hit it straight. He was a young shot to say the least. Sorry, I apologize. That was terrible. I need to excuse myself. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Poker Night Presents Party Poker Live at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal. Giddy up! There's a double straddle on the felt, and this town isn't big enough for the both of them. Robert's making it 400 out of the gun, Antonio restraddling to 800, so the stakes just went up. Action folds to Roberts, who bumps it up with ace eight. Antonio, without hesitation, takes a flop. He's got the computer hand, he's ready to go. What do you think, Sam? That would've been a bad time to go for the triple barrel. Both players catch a piece. Roberts flops top pair, Antonio flops middle pair. I think Roberts probably should have bet the flop and gotten some value, but it's okay to every now and then trap. She's got to put her foot in the gas now, though. She's got a good hand, and if Antonio does have a pair, he's going to give her some action. So she bets 3,500. Antonio doesn't have much choice but to call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he raises, and I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to do here. Is it a bluff? Is it a value bet? I don't know. And Roberts doesn't know either. She's clearly going to call. She's reaching for big chips. Does she sense weakness? She just goes for the flat call. Now Antonio has to know there's a good chance he's behind. The reverse of the king of clubs, which changes things quite a bit. Tens now a straight, back to her flush gets in. Both players are not very happy with their hand strength. And it might be a reasonable opportunity for Antonio to just turn his hand to a bluff and go for it. The problem is Roberts could have some strong hands that raise preflop like kings or an ace, or maybe even a hand like ace-10. So he has to be a little afraid of this river, but he also has to know his queen is never good. He loads the gun and he fires for 21,000 here. A big bet on the river. He's saying, I know you have the ace and you simply can't call. One of the best things about the way Antonio plays is he's aggressive and he fights for pots. Now, sometimes that can be expensive and your opponents can own you, but in tough spots like this, it has a way of working out. Because I know you're gonna put me on an ace. That I know. So the only way to win the pot. Tough spot for Roberts. What's she going to do? Yeah, you said, yeah, yeah. All right, Antonio. She makes an excellent call with her ace. Queen. Antonio tables the bluff, and Roberts picks him off right after he just stacked her for value. Why am I trying to bluff Lauren? It never works. You had it right. Big call, and she's back on the scoreboard. Of course. Another hand straddled and re-straddled. Yang opening the button to 3,000 with king seven of diamonds. Certainly a playable hand on the button. My friend Bob Safai would play this hand so well, but I would not. Lauren, Bob Safai would play any Good hand. Man, he just has to be dealt in. He's not gonna leave you hanging. Antonio, just a call preflop here with ace-queen. Wouldn't mind seeing a three about, but call is also okay. Jack-10-3, rainbow. Both players pretty much brick. Antonio does have a gutter to the nuts. And Yang has a backdoor flush draw. And that turn heats things up a bit. Antonio now with the double gutter. 
And Yang turns a flush draw and a straight draw as well. Bet 4,000. Young bets 4,000 here. I like this play. Try and take the pot down, and if they do call, you have a lot of equity. Now, what does Antonio do? Classic Antonio coming in raising, and now Young has a pretty interesting decision. He's getting fairly good odds to call, almost three to one in his money, so calling here just to try and hit the flush of the straight might not be a bad play. I'll tell you what, it's always a bad play. Whistling. Okay. Call. We've got a pot brewing. And that is an action card. The nuts for Young on the river, top pair for Antonio. You couldn't ask for a more action packed river. Now Antonio's got to slow down. He's got to pump the brakes a little bit. His opponent can have hands that beat him. He could have a hand like Jack-8 or 10-8 or 8-8. So when you have Ace-Queen, you got to slow down. There's also the chance of the flush. Well, that's not too likely. Yong now has to decide what does he think Antonio has and pick a size that makes sense against it. 50,000. 50,000 is a huge bet. The pot was just $30,000 before this bet. But Yong knows how stationary Esfandiari can play. What do you get, Rob? I think I have to call you again. Now Antonio has a very difficult decision here. He has top pair, but his opponent is saying that he has pretty much a straighter better. You got there? Antonio would prefer huh? to have a diamond in his hand so his opponent's less likely to have a flush, but he doesn't have one. I got there, that's the, that's the thing. <laughs> I paired up on the river. Just call. So you either have a nine miss. You could have king queen, I guess. So now the question is, does he think Yong is just a bluffalo? Or did he think he actually woke up with the goods? Good lay down from Antonio. He lets it go versus the 50K bet where they had it. Calls the 50k bet they're bluffing. I mean, that that's just playing good probably. poker. That one's gonna hurt. Antonio Esfandiari makes the correct decision and relinquishes top pair top picker. Now you make the right decision and stick around because we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Poker Night Presents Party Poker Live at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal. And the triple straddle's back on. Come on, Jeff, punish the straddlers, man. I know, you said if you're raising if you put money in the pot. You're on the button, man. Yeah, I'm a post-flop guy, you know? Jeff Gross calls with Ace-Jack-2 to in position. How much am I dying in this damn game? 25, like... Raise 6,600. Sam Trickett raises Ace-10 suited out of position. This is how you want to be playing poker. 9-4 oh. off, not a very strong hand to play, and the action is back over to Jeff Gross. He's never getting through some. He's going to at least call. He might be debating the merit of raising. Blinds, buddy. But he's going to call. We've actually got two pretty so strong hands here. Hand Let's take the flop. Right? I just know when Jeff puts any money in the pot, he, you know, pretty much knowing that I'm going to raise every, every time. He's going to have a hand. Both players brick, very dry board. Queen, seven, deuce, rainbow. It doesn't get much more dry than this. There are no straight draws, no flush draws. You either hit that queen or you didn't, which makes it a pretty good spot to go for a bluff C bet. Trigger's going to take that opportunity and bets 5,500 on the flop. Now we have a bit of a close spot for Jeff. He does have the back door, not flush draw. He does have some turns he can turn gut shots on. And Ace gives him top pair. And it's a fairly small bet. I'd like to see a call here and go from there. Call. And that turn is great for Jeff Gross. He picks up the nut flush draw, and now he's certainly going nowhere. For Trickett, can he still really fire here? He has no equity. He just has one over card. I don't know if this is the hand he wants to pick to go to town with. Sam disagrees and fires out 18,000 here on the turn. Now, if you're Jeff Gross, you don't call this flop to fold this turn. So we're going to see him call again. And if a club doesn't come, 
it's going to be tough for Jeff to win this hand. Could Jeff possibly be thinking about raising here? All in. And he does, pulls the trigger. Awesome play from Jeff Gross. Puts so much pressure on Sam Trickett, who was trying to bluff him, but it does not work. And I love mixing in the raise here on the turn from Jeff. PBF. Pro right. one got one, you know? Pro two got it through. These kinds of plays are what separate good players from the pack. Oh, wait, I haven't looked out straddle. Straddle. Yang raises it up to 2,500 with quite a bad hand. He does have the button, but even then, this is probably a hand he could let go. Her pan's gonna take a flop with ace 10. And now to Roberts in the straddle. And the price of poker is going up. 6,400 to go with Jack 10 suited. A pretty hand. Makes sense to every now and then raise it up, especially if the button's getting really out of line and raising with hands like 6-4 works out in a pretty big way. Yong has a terrible hand, but he is priced into the pot, so he calls, and we're taking a flop. And that is a flop. Roberts flops a flush. Yang gets no piece of it, and she quickly checks over to her opponent, setting the trap. Yang does not fall in. Once again, Roberts checks, and this is always a dangerous situation to trap. If your opponent doesn't start firing at some point, then you just don't build the pot, and you want to, in general, try to play big pots with your good hands. However, if you think that they'll get out of line, then trapping them can be quite good. I'm not exactly sure what Yong is trying to do here on the turn with a six. He's gonna get action from better hands and make worse hands fold, so I'm not a big fan of this. Raise. Raise, 15,000. Roberts now springs to life with the check raise. Even though it doesn't feel good, Yang has to let it go at this point. If Roberts has a strong hand, he's dead. But he's going nowhere, and we're taking a river. Offsuit deuce. Nothing has changed here for either player. And Robert seems to fire again. If you check here, your opponent's not going to bite because they know you either have a good hand or a bluff. So she needs to fire here, make it on the big side, and possibly get some value from hands like a king or a nine. It's not too likely that Yang's gonna call with a six, but you never know. Sometimes people like to look you up. She's reaching for chips. 28,000 to go again on the river. And Yang raises it up to 75,000. Normally for this play, you want to have a heart in your hand so your opponent's less likely to have a flush. But he's just doing it because he simply does not believe her. Unfortunately, though, Roberts does have the third nuts. I think at this point, Roberts is debating to go all in or to just call. This one, uh, so we can order dinner now, so we have it when it's ready. Is it, can we order I'm all in. Can we order for and she goes for, for the value. Oh, oh baby. Yeah. I just, I just want a chicken breast. Yeah, yeah. Lauren Roberts collects a $320,000 pot Ooh. on her way to the lead here on day two. Ooh.
Yeah, because because then we have it ready when it's the break. Lauren Roberts digs herself out of the hole and is now standing tall on a couple of stacks. What are the odds of flopping a flush on a hand you three bet from the straddle? I have no idea. I'm just reading words off a teleprompter. We'll figure out the math when we return. The session's just kicking off and we already have some big ups and downs. Antonio Sfondiari up 63,000, Rob Yogg down 64,000, and Lauren Roberts fought her way back to be barely up on the session. Next time on Poker Night Presents, Party Poker Live at Playground Poker Club, Jeff Rose is betrayed by one of his besties for the resties, <laughs> and Sam Trickett gets real feisty with some nice moderate hand. holdings. Nice if you want more Poker Night, you can find us on social media, including Twitch and YouTube, where you can find full-length episodes, live streams, and exclusive content. Also, don't forget to download our free poker app. You and your friends can have your very own Poker Night, as well as a chance to win a seat in our show. Search for us in your app store and download it today. For everyone here at Poker Night, I'm Doug Polk. Poker Night in America is brought to you by Kimo Sabi Mezcal and Sit and Go 2.0. That one's going to hurt, Rob. That one's going to hurt. Nah, it won't hurt. It won't hurt you at all. King Seven of Diamonds. I hate getting bluffed on TV. King Seven of Diamonds would be a good hand there. I hate it.